I'm Fred Baker, Dean of Channing College. It's a fine September morning, true autumn, with just a touch of chill in the air. This is the first day of the fall term. In just a few minutes now, this campus will be swarming with students. The eager, the curious, the doubtful, and the dreamers. Each facing the most explosive time in his or her life. So at Channing, as at any college, I suppose, we've come to expect the unexpected. Although, once in a rare while, we're surprised. And our lives are touched by a truly unusual individual. I remember one student, different from all the rest. The effect of his presence was profound on his fellow students and on one member of the faculty in particular. You know our athletic director, Mr. Allison? Hi, Hilda. Hello, Mr. Allison. Mr. Hal, Dean Baker's here. He'll be right down. Have a nice summer? Oh, yes. And you? Very bad sunburn. Very few fish. Don't forget to take your walk. Eight blocks and no cheating. Yes, sir. And don't forget to get those calcium pills refilled while you're out. Oh, and my gown and cap for the convocation. Oh, where, oh, where? While I'm doing all that walking, if I should happen to pass a little tiny house oh, about the size of an orange crate with a for sale sign on it, cost $200 all told. I don't want a house yet. Joe. I just want to feel a little more secure. Our distinguished dean giving you free bus service to and from school. Now, how secure can you be? I still expect the roof to fall in. It's too good to be true. When does the phone ring? When does one of those alumni big shots drop in with a funny look on his face? Stop it. Stop acting as though you were guilty. Guilt or innocence has nothing to do with it. Oh, darling. Just a few more months. Okay? First day jitters, never changes. The legal seizure of power over 20 boys and girls seems so momentous. Well, good luck. If you need any help, you know where my office is. I'll be fine. Good morning. My name is Hal. Joseph Hal. My office is in room 412 at Morgan Hall. I'll be available at 4 p.m. every weekday starting next Monday in case any of you want to see me. Uh, during this course, we will discuss modern plays. I will not lecture. We will exchange opinions freely. However, However, you will soon discover that my opinion is worth much more than anybody else's. Yes? Is this the meeting place of Literature 1C, the section instructed by Dr. Joseph Howe? I am Tertan, Ferdinand R., reporting at the direction of the head of the English department. Find yourself a seat, Mr. Tertan. Uh, 
Uh, your first assignment is traditional, I'm afraid, and should bring a traditional groan. After giving the matter a few minutes thought, I want each of you to speak extemporaneously on the subject. Who am I, and why have I come to Channing College? Oh. Hmm. You mean right off the top of our heads? You may write down some notes. Yes? Uh, my name is Arthur J. Casper III, and my father is Arthur J. Casper, and my grandfather before him. Uh, my mother's name is Nina Wimble Casper, and both of my parents are college graduates. My father is an insurance, and, and I was born in, in Indianapolis 18 years ago, uh, and we still live there. Well, I suppose, in a sense, that technically answers who am I, Mr. Casper. Yes, Mr. Tertan. Well, Dr. House. Uh, <laughs> to be, to be uh, perfectly fair to my fellow students and, and to you, this would not be for me extemporaneous. Oh, you mean you'd heard we always gave the same subject? Well, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, uh, who am I is, of course, a mystery on a metaphysical level. However, I've given much rationalization to the subject. In the depths of night, when the gift of sleep is denied and there is no comfort from any other earthly being, hasn't each of us caught a glimpse of self and trembled at what we saw? Like, wow. Silence. Are you finished, Mr. Tertan? No, sir. But, but... Go on, please, Mr. Tertan. Who am I? is a question which from time long immemorable out of mind has bedeviled the inner man. Out of the starry depths of heaven hurtles the spear of query, who am I? One must answer before the spear pierces the skull and drives one mad. I think, therefore, I am. But who am I? Turton, I am. But what is Turton? of this time, of that place, of some parentage. What does it matter? Existence without alloy is the question presented. Tomorrow you will finish. Before we meet again tomorrow, I want each of you to ask yourselves why the difficult path Mr. Tertan has chosen and which to attempt to explain himself is worthy of our attention. We will discuss the value of the original mind rather fully. Dismissed. You'd better get on to your next class, Mr. Tertan. with you, sir, as a professor. Very few professors are free souls. Kant, Hegel, Nietzsche. In my opinion, you are in this category. I am not a professor. I'm an instructor. I use the term in the French sense. Generically, a teacher. You also are a man of letters. I was in the library doing research on an essay on Schopenhauer. I came across a card with, with your name on it. 
I didn't know that you were an author, sir. It's been a fairly well-kept secret. It was the last time anyone took it out of the library. Good Lord. You're first in five years. What does that matter? It is the inevitable fate to be forgotten. Certainly a man does not write merely to be remembered. I myself am a, am a writer. A man of letters like yourself. Have you written much? A defense of religious optimism against the pessimism of Hegel. An essay combating materialism. Fictional works. Two novels. Mr. Tertan. How old are you? Is that of any significance in our relationship, sir? No. No, certainly not. Would you like me to read anything? I would be honored, sir. I have a, I have a few of my things right here. Uh. Uh. What's the matter? I tripped! about walking. Boy, I'll set it back a hundred years. The doctor said walk, so walk. You're a tyrant, you know that, mister? Yes. I become a glamour piece. Huh? What does that mean? It means... Be swift as lightning, my son, in French. Even the king of England in French? Boy. Well, it's a language with style. Sois vif, comme les clairs, mon fils. <laughs> Hi. Mama's not home, but she said to raid the icebox if you like. Oh, Mary, this is Mr. Tertan, one of my students. Hello. Doctor, I left my briefcase in your office. I thought perhaps you'd brought it home with you. Oh, what's going on here, huh? Memorable and historic deaths. We take turns. That was the execution of Charles I. You missed my marvelous Cleopatra. With horrible poisonous snakes. <laughs> and a final cigarette. A final cigarette for Cleopatra? An anachronism, but what can one do? The child insists a brave person must be given a cigarette before dying. An act of piety, I suppose. Yeah, but uh, Cleopatra... Even Joan of Arc. She has an absolute fixation on the subject. What about you and your French? He does all the dying speeches in French. Even Nathan Hale. And boy, is that ridiculous. Why is that ridiculous? That's no more ridiculous than your final cigarette. The heck it isn't. You're trying to make me look like a fool in front of Dr. Howe. You stop it. Hey, turn. I said stop it. Absolutely unbelievable. Who? That boy, Tertan. He invents words that don't exist. He drops little chunks of incorrect Latin here and there. His punctuation and grammar have to be seen to be believed, but the boy's mind is a, a miracle. Frankly, the poor kid gave me the creeps. I'll do some checking on him after school tomorrow. <laughs> Joseph, you know Teddy Blackburn? A pleasure, sir. I've heard wonderful things about your course. The most wonderful being that if you let him take the course and he passes it, he can graduate next June. Actually, Teddy's in a spot that isn't really all his fault. He has been very active on the campus. Vice President of the Student Council and Business Manager of the newspaper. Also, there's the Debating Club and the Literary Society. Have I missed anything? A person does what he can. 
especially if he feels about Channing as I do. I was once an English major, sir. In what regiment? Well, what about it, Joseph? May he join your class? Well, there are a few extra desks. Mr. Blackburn is welcome. Uh, thank you, sir. I wish there was some way I could express my gratitude. And maybe there is. You might speak to some of your real estate friends. See if you can get Mr. Howe a nice house near the campus. I will, sir. Blackburn, skip the real estate agents for a while. Oh, uh, you'll tell me when, sir. I will. And Teddy, don't get the idea this is going to help your marks. <laughs> of course not, sir. In my day, fellows like Blackburn were known as BMOC, big men on the campus. Now they just call them operators. Well, now, Joseph, how long are you going to camp out in that little room? A little while yet. Joe, you're doing very well here. Everybody likes you. You'll never get away from us. You'll be retired at 65 with a ridiculous little pension and varicose veins from 35 years on your feet. <laughs> Listen to me, Joe. This isn't Sedgwick College, this is Channing. Nobody's watching you, judging you. You were innocent and we know it. We also know we're very lucky to have you. Now, when are you going to relax? Pretty soon now. Good. Miss Marks? Yes? When I got to the high school, you had already gone for the day. The office gave me your address. I'm a teacher, too, at Channing. Uh, may I talk to you? Oh, <laughs> you can come on in. I bet you college teachers don't have to stay up half the night ruining your eyes, correcting the themes of a bunch of cheating scalawags. <laughs> I'm uh, checking up on one of my students. He received a scholarship to Channing mostly because of a glowing letter from you. From me? Mm -hmm. Oh. I seldom glow, young man. Turtan. How is Turtan? Ferdinand R. doing? Is he as overpowering in college as he was in high school? I swear that boy swallowed dictionaries that haven't even been written yet. He's a brilliant student. He's too brilliant for me. I used to shiver every time he came into class. I'm concerned by the boy. According to the records, he lives in town with his parents. I went there once, troubled like you. I rang the doorbell. After a while, I heard someone inside coming. And then, don't ask me why, but I turned and ran down those stairs as if Satan himself were after me. Don't ask me why. Anybody home?
What is it you want? Oh, I, uh, I'm from the college. Is it about Ferdinand? Has something happened? No. No, everything's all right. I'm, I'm his literature teacher. Oh, Professor Howe. Mr. Howe. Oh, my son, he talks about you as though you were, I don't know what, a, a, a god. Uh, excuse me. Oh, this, this is an honor, sir. W would you sit down, please? <laughs> He's at the library. <laughs> well, is he not at the library? Sit down, sit down. <laughs> now, he could start a library of his own here, no? <laughs> so... So you like my... my Ferdinand? He's an exceptional student. Uh, exceptional. My wife, she's not well, but try to keep her quiet if possible. It's been ringing for quite some time. Don't let me keep you from her. It's all right, it's all right. Lisa, Tisha, Spazalsta. I have a suggestion. There is a nice restaurant just down the street. The woman makes her own pies and cakes. It would please me to take you there for some coffee. No, uh, nothing. Thank you. Well, uh, is good news uh, about my Ferdinand? Uh, you want to see him personally? Uh, the library is only, it's only three blocks down the street. No. Wait till, till he hears that that his famous Professor Howe has been here in our house. I'm troubled about his health. He, he does not eat more than, than that canary bird. I tell him, that is to say, my, my wife and I tell him that... No, I don't mean that. He seems, well, too emotional, tense. I mean, even his apparent idolatry of me, it doesn't make sense. He disturbs me. What has he done? Fits of temper. Nothing too serious. Yet... Lisa Spazalsta! He's, he's been working too hard. What boy his age has such a mind? The knowledge he pours out is, is beautiful. Uh, both my, my wife and, and myself, we, we come from families that, that have a great love of, of learning. My wife has been educated at the finest gymnasium in Prague. She can speak in five languages. She, she's an expert in philosophy. She was the only woman ever admitted to, to the Prague Spinoza Society. I saw in his records that the boy hasn't yet had his college medical examination. The doctor will tell lies, will all be lies. He's only tired from doing too much. Oh, please. What will you do? Show my boy mercy. What's wrong with your wife? Shall I open the door and let you see for yourself? You saw the picture. A beautiful girl. It was 30 years ago. And now my Lisa, who could speak in five languages, could not answer you in, in one. You want to know why she wants to come out? She wants to kill the canary bird. She has decided if she kills that canary bird, everything will be all right. Did she be here with the boy? No, I'm not going to let them take her away. What must he think? Does it matter? One day he will be exactly the same. Well, that's ridiculous. Mental illness is almost never inherited. Please forgive me. 
I have lived with this sickness. Mr. Howe, will you let him finish the year? Every day is something. He is in glory in your class. He tells me he, he found a soul like his. Please, Mr. Howe, give my boy this, this crumb. I am on trial in this school. If I knowingly kept a mentally ill boy in class, I could be dismissed. He's a fine boy, Mr. Tertan, but I have other responsibilities. Oh, please. But she's seen the boy and is concerned about my having arranged the examination on my own away from the school. Mrs. L. I simply think my husband is taking on a needless burden. Please sit down. He's an astonishing young man. And I'm not at all certain that he wasn't wise to our little ruse. Now, obviously, I did a great deal more testing than one would expect in a routine student physical. The boy's father was correct. He is suffering from an extremely rare type of inherited brain disease. Rather severe and progressive. How bad is he now? Well, of course, I wasn't able to do all the tests necessary, but I was able to get his mother's records from the county hospital. There's always a slim chance, but evaluating everything, there's no doubt in my mind as to the boy's condition, nor to the almost inevitable prognosis. And what should be done about it? Eventually, he'll have to be hospitalized. Could he be dangerous? Not now. But sooner or later? I'd say later rather than sooner, Mrs. Howe. It'll be obvious when it happens. My husband has no business taking even the slightest risk. Yes, I'll be free in a moment. I'll send a copy of my report to the college, all right? If you have to. Mr. Howe, I don't have to do anything but send you a bill. I'm a private doctor, consulted on a private matter. Then send the report to me personally. Joe! No. I'll send it along to the proper people, Mary. Application for membership in the Students' Literary Club. You joining a club? In most ways, I suppose they are crass minds. Yet, bound together in their common love of letters, perhaps they transcend their intellectual lack. One cannot endlessly live alone, Dr. Howe. When are the elections? On Thursday night. I hope they accept you. A faculty recommendation in writing is necessary, sir. Of course. Mr. Ferdinand Tertan is marked by his profound devotion to letters and all things of the mind. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Chertan, if anything bothers you, Anything at all, you come straight to this office. Will you do that? <laughs> I guess it takes all kinds to make a world. Why is that always said as though it weren't so? First test, sir. What do your remarks mean? 
for what it says, obviously. This is very poor work. Therefore, your grade is F. You uh, write about the cherry orchard. Here in this warm and honey-sweet land of charming dreams, we can relax and enjoy ourselves. That's what I felt. Well, you can't mean that. Have you ever read the cherry orchard? You implying that I was bluffing, sir? I prefer believing that you were bluffing to believing that you really thought that Chekhov's story of frustration and jealousy, the forced sale of a home, the end of an era, this is warm and honey sweet. Let's see what you wrote about Shaw. Uh, sir, I, I've never received a mark like, like this before. Never anything below B minus. Never. A thing like this, it's just never happened to me before. You're right, of course, sir. I, I haven't properly studied it. My, all my outside student activities, well, even in class, it's so difficult to concentrate when someone like that Full curtain dominates every session. No. No, the fault is mine. I accept full blame. Well, let's just set it down to lack of preparation. You know how it is, sir? People know you're willing to help out. The phone never stops ringing. But then I suggest you take the phone off the hook and do some boning up. Now, we'll forget about this test and see how you make out the rest of the term. Thank you, sir. I couldn't ask for anything more. You're very kind. Good afternoon, Mr. Blackburn. Mr. Howe, when the dean mentioned you might be buying a house... I told you I wasn't ready. You want some? Hmm? Oh, no. Thank you. I... Why have they called the others in ahead of you? Perhaps it's some sort of tribal custom. I, I don't know. Why haven't they called you? Oh, I'm not for membership. I'm just waiting for my boyfriend. Oh, don't be so nervous. It's not that important. I'm not nervous. What about me? Well, uh, I tried, old man. I can't fight City Hall. Thank you, sir. 
I'm honored to be a student of Dr. Howe. My name is Turtan, Ferdinand R. Mr. Turtan, students are not allowed in the faculty lounge. I tried three times to see you at your office, sir. I can't imagine my secretary not telling me. She didn't think the matter was important enough to disturb you. She said that she would see you got the letter, but that wouldn't do. She might have put it aside as being useless. It might have gathered dust. The letter had to reach you. I regret violating the rules of this room, but I had no other choice. Excuse me, Duke. Humanitarianism is not the entire reply to all men's needs. But without its gentle influence, the cruelty of life can overwhelm and suffocate. Certain are chosen out of the human race to be friend and consoler of others. Of these, for example, is Joseph Howe, Ph.D. Well, he's a lonely kid. You say one kind word to him and he adopts you. My failing to measure up to the brutish and infantile standards of the Channing Literary Society is of small moment. But for the leaders of this group to mock one such as Dr. Howe, how did they mock you? Who knows? They ignored my recommendation. I guess that's what he means. Well, he is a brilliant student. His midterm test was the best in class by far. He has an incandescent mind. Uh, mock one such as Dr. Howe is a staggering affront to all wisdom and kindness. Well. see the boy in class every day. It, it does seem a little erratic, almost bizarre bursting in here like this. What about the boy, are you, Joe? What do you mean? Just what I said. The boy doesn't trouble you, does he? No, of course not. All right, Joe. <laughs> This is impossible, sir. You're here to complain again? Indeed I am, sir. But I gave you a C minus. That's a passing grade. I told you before, sir, that I've never I received I shouldn't complain if I were you. You did a thoroughly bad job in your first test, actually. This is just a, a little, just a very little better. That might be a matter of opinion, sir. It is. My opinion. Well, perhaps my work doesn't meet your unique requirements, sir, but... There might be others who would consider it more worthy. <laughs> you really believe that? Yes. You forgot to say, sir. Oh, uh, who might find it more worthy? For example. The dean, for example. The dean might be guided by the information that the person who gave me this mark is totally unfit to teach. Blackburn, you'd better be on your way. The dean might be guided by the information that this teacher recommended to the literary society a boy that belongs in an institution. That he protects this boy day after day, though his presence in class endangers everyone else. The dean might wonder, as the students wonder, why this teacher goes to such lengths to protect this student. Oh, the dean shouldn't be too surprised. This isn't the first time that this particular teacher got involved with such a student. I have in my possession a letter from a friend of mine at Sedgwick College, which states in black and white about you and some 19-year-old girl. Now, no kid 19 years old writes a suicide note to her teacher and kills herself, unless there's something fishy going on. 
Your letter tells all about it, eh? It does. Yes, sir. Including what was in the suicide note? A note as vague and brilliant and beyond understanding as she was herself? So if you can't make sense out of the letter, why not, why not take the easy way out and suspect the worst? Isn't that how it works, Blackburn, hmm? Girl student, man teacher, bring out the tar and feathers. But uh, surely that's not all your letter says. Doesn't it mention, and then? And then they found out that twice before this girl had tried to kill herself, long before she knew me and left similar notes. Doesn't your letter say that? Letter says what I said it did. That's the wonder, isn't it? Guilty by accusation. And somehow your effectiveness is gone. You're guilty from then on. Isn't that right, Blackburn? Yes, here's that funny little look in your eyes. I'm very well acquainted with that look. I had to live with that look. My wife, my dear wife, had to choke on that look. Give me your blue book. There you are, sir. Permit me, sir. You take this paper to the dean and tell him that considering all your arguments, I lowered the grade. What are you doing? Well, this means my graduation, my livelihood, the whole future. Don't do this to me. It's done already. S sir, I... I spoke rashly, hastily, uh... I had no intention, no real intention of going to the dean. It rests with you entirely, sir. I hope you will restore the original mark, the C minus. But the letter did say the charges were all lies. It was just as you said. Here, sir, read it yourself. F is the grade you deserve, and it stands. Actually, your second paper wasn't any better, it was worse. Do you want me to get on my knees to you, sir? I will. I will, sir, on my knees. On my knees, sir! Now get off your knees. Take your paper and get out. I must graduate. My entire life is at stake. You still have the rest of the term to get a passing grade? I won't pass. Now you're against me. No matter what I do, you'll fail me. Oh, you're wrong, Blackburn. I'll pass you no matter what you do. And that includes going to the dean or not, as you wish. Do you know why? I owe it to this college to pass you. I owe it to this college to be rid of you. Now get out of here. Wait. You have a certain jungle agility that may take you far, Blackburn, but let us share a secret, you and I. Tertan will never make a dollar or vote or own a house. His name will never be in the class book. Poor devil, he won't even make the telephone directory. But that poor sick boy is worth ten of you. curtain falls on Ibsen's ghosts. The audience is left with the certainty that Mrs. Alving will give her son Oswald the poison rather than condemn him to a lifetime of illness. 
Now, what would you say Mr. Ibsen was trying to tell us? What, what was his principal theme? Mr. Casby? Well, Mr. Ibsen says it right here in black and white, that Oswell's insanity was the tragedy of heredity. The sins of the fathers are visited on their children. Miss Killen. I, I think it's more than that. I, I think Ibsen is attacking men such as uh, Pastor Manders. Why did he make poor Mrs. Alvin go back to her husband and always hide the truth? It, it's like feudalism. It, it's primitive. Mr. Haskell. Oh, I go along with Casper. If his father hadn't been such a wolf and got sick, his son Oswald would have been okay. But that's not the point! Oh. Mr. Tertan, what is the point? I believe Ibsen implies a more obscure but more noble morality than placing the blame on the father. The preordained is the preordained. One cannot rebel against the universe. To me, what Ibsen says is, no matter what the circumstances, one must be careful not to kill the joie de vivre, the joy of living in another human being. Boy, oh boy, here we go again. Silence. I think that Mr. Tertan has managed to avoid the obvious, the easy way to think, to reach the heart of the matter, as we have often seen him do. Go on, please, Mr. Tertan. <laughs> Hi, Hilda. And don't say not to call him Professor. Mama told me. Uh, it doesn't happen until next fall. Mama also said you were moving out right after commencement. Uh-huh. The Dean Baker's giving you an apartment in the freshman house. Oh, I messed up a bunch of freshmen. Rough. <laughs> Won't you be glad to get rid of us and not hear the baby crying all night long? Oh, I don't know. Last couple of weeks I've kind of gotten used to it. Besides, he's very photogenic. Gee. I better get a picture of you two while I still can. Oh, Hilda, please. Oh, now, don't argue with Hilda. Just smile. Look at the birdie. Hold still. Thank you. Well, Joe, uh, another year. in the picture. The what? The clothes of his ruined father. I'll take care of him. Please, let Joseph handle him. Do you want to, Joe? I've known the boy was sick for some time. I took a chance I could get him through one more term. I knew that. Why didn't you say anything? I had confidence you knew what you were doing. Thank you, sir. Curtin? I've been observing the ceremonies of graduation. Of course, it's totally without meaning in the larger sense, but somehow appealing nonetheless. Why is it that one cannot completely reject sentiment, Dr. Howe? I don't know. Normally, I would avoid such pageantry and ostentation with horror, but I've decided. Yes? When I graduate from Channing, I'm going to participate in all the rituals. I'm going to parade across the campus. I'm going to sing the school song, listen to the speeches. I will endure all. My ironic smile shall be inward. I'm glad you've decided that, Tertan. Shall I tell you why? I feel I owe it to Channing, despite its intellectual shortcomings. I have a sense of belonging. I've been happy here. So it's goodbye to Tertan. Yes, but he had his year. So did Joseph. I know.
student with a truly insoluble problem is, thank heaven, a rarity at Channing. But with almost 2,000 human beings here, life with a capital L is, I assure you, never uninvolved. If variety is the spice of life, we at Channing lead a highly seasoned existence. Mm -hmm. Quite decent living quarters. A lot better than we ever had when we were here. Yes, we're very proud of Grayson Hall. <laughs> Professor Howe's just taken over as housemaster of this men's dormitory. The building was made possible through the generosity of Samuel Grayson, another of our distinguished alumni, but of course some years ago. <laughs> and you need a new one. Well, that's why I'm here. To find out what the university needs and uh, make recommendations to the fund committee. I know. Uh, of course, overcrowded conditions make it very difficult to study. Mm -hmm. Andrews, may we come in? Well, this young man has been doing some fine work in Chaucer. I'll join you in a minute. Oh, oh who's he? Is it more trouble? No, the most. Uh, sir, I wish I could say I can explain this, but, well, I can't, not without sounding like an idiot. Uh, well, try. And do give me the short version, please, since Dean Baker and one of the most august members of our alumni fund committee is due in about eight seconds. Oh. Well, sir, it's like well, this. You see, it's, sir, it's simple. I bet ten dollars that I could smuggle Billy in and out of Grayson Hall with nobody being the wiser. Well, you won half the bet. The wrong half. <clears throat> Here they come. Oh, Joe, why you get three? Oh, hey, let me, let me, let me think. Of course, uh, jumping would be one solution. Uh, what are we going to do now, sir? Open the door, Mr. Rogers, and keep your fingers crossed. Yes, we have our lighter moments. But like the weather here at Channing, they often give way to stormier periods. And as the custodian of the emotional climate on campus, I often find myself drawn into more serious matters. Dean, I wanted to catch you before the game. Well, you barely did, Judd. I think we're ready to start. Why aren't you warming up? I don't know what makes you father so confident. You never win. I often think he doesn't come to these homecomings to bolster your son's morale. Not this year, something less pleasurable. What's the matter, young Judd unhappy? I can't say, but I do know that I am. A check? Well, this is one umpire admits he needs glasses. Well, made out the cash for $100, signed Judson Hartley, Jr. What's the problem? The endorsement. Robert Atkins. Well? You don't follow, Fred? My son has been giving money to a faculty member. Well, I'm sure there's some good explanation for it. Well, I'm afraid there is. Based on his midterms, my boy was flunking in Atkins' chemistry course. Yet a week ago, three days after he gave Atkins his check, he came through his semester finals with a passing grade. Judd, are you implying that a professor at Channing... I'm implying nothing. I'm merely stating the record. I leave it to you as to what action is to be taken. Well, there'll be no action taken whatsoever until the issue's been clarified. Judd, I'll speak to Atkins as soon as possible. Come on. We're holding up the game. And the father brought this to your attention. What else did he bring? Charges of bribery? Those are your words, Bob. No one else's. There he is, aren't they? Isn't that why you're here to ask me to refute the, the accusation of a man who's being destroyed because his only son won't fit into the mold that he set for him? And because the illustrious Judson Hartley is being destroyed, that boy is being destroyed. The check, Bob. I cashed a check for the boy one weekend so he could make a deposit on a piano he wanted to rent. A piano? Well, for heaven's sake, why didn't the boy make his check out to the piano company? Because he knows darn well his old man resents his interest in music. I see. Well, apparently, the old man keeps track of the boy's checking account. Just for the record, despite his lack of interest in chemistry, Judd Hartley passed this course because he deserved to. No other reason. That's good enough for me, Bob. Thanks for clearing the air. Thank you. Oh, about the boy, where do we go with him from here? Fine arts department, or do we still try to shape him into an unwilling chemistry major? I'm not sure. 
but I do know he won't be destroyed. Not as long as he's on this campus. Well, his father's going to take the position. It's none of our business. Probably so. But to a great extent, it is our business. In fact, if we're not willing to stick our necks out when the situation demands it, we have no business at all being here. To paraphrase the philosopher Descartes, there are problems and there are problems. And always more than enough to go around. Which explains why Joe Howe's day can get as complicated as mine. Dr. Howe. Oh, hello, Ellen. Well, it's after five. Now, why aren't you back at the dorm preening for the big dance? I'm sure my wife's been at the beauty parlor for at least four hours. Well, I'm afraid I'm not going. Oh? Well, between you, me, and the lamppost, I wish I didn't have to go either. But an inattentive chaperone is a must at these occasions. Well, I'll see you in class. Not after next Wednesday. Well, that's what I was waiting out here to tell you. For over an hour now. I didn't want you to think it had anything to do with your teaching ability. I mean, I... I know how personally you take your work. Well, you're darn right I do. And I'm not about to lose one of my best students without a good reason. Really, Dr. Howe, it, it isn't necessary for... Any of us to be able to strike sparks with a student to stimulate the kind of creative thinking you brought into my class? Oh, no, I'm not about to let you go. Well, that is not unless you've uh, fallen in love with some Yale man and he's about to steal you off into the wilds of New Haven. Oh, Dr. Help, please. Well, what is it then? Trouble with your family? You'd qualify for a scholarship on my recommendation alone. Ellen? Why don't you let me help you? You misunderstood, Dr. Howe. I'm not leaving Channing. It's just your class. But why? Because these sparks you were talking about, well, I feel them too. But not as you intend. The college is a thousand time bombs. And we of the faculty, human beings with, alas, every human frailty, can hear the ticking every day of our lives. <laughs>